Hi, it's Alex. Today I want to talk about hate speech. I've heard a lot of discussion about hate speech recently, especially on the internet, and especially in association with first the Charlie Hebdo attacks, and then the incident where this man in the U.S. killed his Muslim neighbors. When I hear people talking about hate speech, I hear them use definitions that I don't necessarily fully agree with. Some of the definitions out there are written in such a way that they reference speech that is offensive to certain groups. I don't think this is a very good way of more objectively defining hate speech, because I think that taking offense is a very subjective thing, like it's in the eye of the beholder, so to speak. So for example, if someone says something, it's really up to me whether or not I get offended by it. It's not like an objective property of what's being said. And I think if we're going to examine speech and try to ascertain whether or not it's hate speech, it's important to have more objective criteria that we can use, so that we can actually look at the speech itself and determine whether or not it's hate speech, without having to reference whether or not a particular group feels offended by it. So that's the first thing I want to clarify. The second thing I want to clarify is that there is this area in speech of things that I consider very harmful, and that I might even consider possibly contributing to violence, but that I still would want to protect as free speech. So I tend to have a little bit of a broader idea of what I would consider hate speech than some people. But, I want to clarify, just because I think that something is hate speech, doesn't mean that I would want to make it illegal, necessarily. There is no one uniform set of rules for hate speech. There are certainly, like, federal laws about hate crime, and there are state laws, and then there are private organizations, like universities, corporations, and such, that have their own policies about speech. So there are all these different sets of rules and policies out there. And what I'm talking about right now is not any of those. I want to talk about the ways in which speech can influence people's actions. And I think that there's a lot of speech that could potentially be very harmful, but that I wouldn't want to make illegal. So just because I'm talking about it in that way, I want to clarify that I'm not advocating for, like, really strict or intense censorship. Okay, so what is hate speech? There's an interesting book that I read a while back, that really changed how I thought about this topic. And it's called Prisoners of Hate, The Cognitive Bases of Anger, Hostility, and Violence. I hope I got the title right. Uh, it's by Aaron T. Beck, who's a psychologist, and it compiles a lot of research on the topic of ways of thinking, that's cognitive, um, and how those ways of thinking relate to anger, hostility, and violence. Both individual violence, and violence between groups of people. And I read this book, and I found it really groundbreaking. If you want to check out the book, I'm going to add a link to it in the description for this video. This book really changed how I thought about violence, in a way that I think is really empowering and really useful. I'm someone who has often had trouble losing my temper, and one insight I gained in life is that one way for me to be more effective at preventing myself from losing my temper is if I can kind of catch that I'm getting angry earlier on in the process. If things escalate, and it gets to the point where I'm just about to lose my temper at someone, I don't really have all that much self-control in that situation. And really, the only thing I can usually do is to quickly remove myself from that situation. On the other hand, if I catch it in its early stages, there's often a lot that I can do, and it's a lot easier for me to get myself into a healthy emotional state. So for example, if I catch myself feeling minorly annoyed at someone, like irritated with them, that's often how it starts. If I can catch that, and then I can start thinking about the person in a more positive light, and I can like discipline myself to think more positive thoughts, to try focusing on listening to the person more, and understanding them, and viewing them with compassion. 
it's usually relatively easy for me to keep myself from getting angry in that kind of situation. So that's just an example of something that I think can apply both to individuals and to groups. I think that it's easier to halt violence and hostility if you kind of nip it in the bud. Violence is kind of the ultimate manifestation of this continuum of behaviors that starts with these, like, little annoyances and then escalates into, like, all-out anger and then sort of becomes this, like, systemic hate and ultimately cul culminates in physical violence. It doesn't always culminate there, but if you sort of continue down that road, that's where it goes. One thing that I think is a major deficiency in our society is the ability to recognize those earlier stages of patterns of thinking that lead down that road. And I think that if we want to stop violence as a society and as a world, as the human race as a whole, if we want to stop or at least reduce the amount of violence in the world, we would do really well to develop a better understanding of those earlier stages that lead down the road to violence. This book is something that I think has a lot of these insights, and I want to share some key ones. I would love to talk about this more, but there's some really key ones in here. One of the worst aspects of speech that I think is hate speech, or tends towards hate speech, is dehumanizing language. So, when we stop talking and thinking about people as people, and we start using terms like scum, or vermin, or negative labels like that. Obviously, the more intensely negative, uh, the more escalating it can be. So I think that that type of dehumanization is often associated with the more escalated forms of hate speech. But now I want to talk about stuff that happens a little bit earlier on and that is selectively talking about or thinking about negative aspects of a person or a group of people or things that the people or person has said or done and ignoring the positive things. I think that when I think about someone in strictly negative terms, it's much easier for me to get angry at them than if I'm balancing thinking about negative things that the person has done with thinking about positive things. I like to use kind of like a 3 to 1 or 5 to 1 ratio, that like, if I'm thinking about one negative thing, sometimes I try to discipline myself to do this, I then will think of three positive things. And that kind of helps keep my mind in a state where I'm viewing the other person more positively. And you can do this with groups of people too. Another thing that I think is a key in uh, escalating violence, and a key thing to become aware of, to catch it earlier on, is when people attribute negative thoughts or negative intentions to another person or to a group of people. So, for example, this could be like, oh, they're just trying to control us, they're just trying to keep us down, they don't care about us, he doesn't care about me, he's just out for himself, those sorts of statements or thoughts. It seems pretty obvious to me that thinking things like that is more likely to lead to anger and hostility. And those types of thoughts can often crop up relatively early in the process. What's interesting is that when I look at the patterns that I just described to you, and then I look out in society, I see these sorts of patterns of speech all over the place. And they're not necessarily described as hate speech, they're not necessarily described as disrespectful, and they're not necessarily recognized as being problematic in any way. But there's pretty solid research that suggests that these ways of thinking actually can lead to conflict escala escalation, hostility, and even violence. So, I hope that I've introduce these ideas to you. I would ideally like to expand on this more, but the basic ideas here are that uh, hate speech is kind of like a nebulous thing, it's, it's not like an either-or thing, it's kind of this continuum, and that it's often easier to prevent group conflict and violence if you catch it earlier on, and that 
there's a lot of solid research on those earlier stages in people's thinking that can culminate in violence later on, but the total awareness of them in society seems to me pretty low. So I think that it's kind of like a, a weakest link, and I think that if we can focus on those things as a society, it could help to protect us from violence and uh, to reduce the total amount of violence in the world. And I think that would be a really, really worthwhile thing. So I am hoping to talk about these things more, uh, to give, get more specific about uh, these different types of ways of thinking that can lead to violence. I'm hoping to do this in some upcoming videos. I would love to hear from you if you have anything to add, or if you disagree with something, or if you have a request for me to talk about a specific point in more depth, I would love that. Uh, please comment, and as always, I really appreciate when people share my videos and subscribe to my channel. Thank you!